Hey everybody, Jake here, and it's time for This Week in Ink number six. I uh, got a few special things um, for news wise today. Um, nothing super crazy, but a few interesting things for sure. Um, to start off with, we'll kind of start with the more interesting topics. Um, first up, Organic Studio is launching some new inks. These are both shimmer inks. Um, according to their Instagram, it says that these both have a modest sheen and shimmer. Well, I'm sorry. One of them has a modest sheen and shimmer. One has a larger amount of shimmer. I'm not sure what larger necessarily means, but they both look to be fairly blue. Um, the one with the more modest sheen is called glycine. The one with the larger sheen is called alanine. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right. But glycine is a blue, and it says alanine is more of an aqua. Um, the only thing that I'm really seeing on the Instagram is the um, glycine. But it, it's it's very nice. It's it's not nearly as um, kind of overshadowed by the sheen as, as some of the other inks I've taken a look at by them are. But they're running a, <clears throat> a promotion where basically if you sent them $25, you would get a bottle of each one of those and a bottle from their regular stock. So that's an extremely good deal considering these inks are $14 a piece as it is. That was limited to 50 people. And they're shipping out um, this week. So that could be more than likely today. That was a couple days ago though, so they're all closed up. Um, if you didn't manage to get in on it, they will be coming into stock regularly in stores next month. So it's something to look forward to. Next up, I haven't been able to get one um, because the pen show kind of ruined my funds, but I will be getting one soon. Um, the Twisby Precision is now out. That's an all-aluminum pen from Twisby. It reminds me a lot of the Levenger LTEC 3.0, which I'll, I'll bring out here real quick. And I'll leave a link down in the description. You can take a look for yourself and compare it. But um, it looks very similar to this pen to me. Uh, the finial is a little different, but a lot of it is very similar. This pen's seven-sided. That pen is six-sided. And it has an ink window here and things like that. But it, it looks very, very unique, which is compelling to me because I like this Lavender a lot. I just I don't find myself using it for whatever reason. Um, so maybe the, the Twisby piston filler in that wonderful Twisby nib will um, convince me to, to use that pen a lot more than I use the Levenger. But I look forward to picking one of those up. Those are $80 in fine, medium, and broad, and $85 in the 1.1 millimeter stub. Next, Van S just, they're, they're very, um, very well known, I guess, is the best way to put it, for their large selection of ink. Um, they have well over a thousand inks they have just added a new ink brand that i've never heard of called krishna k-r-i-s-h-n-a they've added um a, a large amount of colors to be honest they really went for it on this launch and some of these are really pretty some of them i'm you know a bit more eh about um they're 20 milliliter bottles though which i find a little strange slightly off-putting I'm, I'm kind of worried um they won't be easy to fill from. They do look to be fairly tall for the size, but eh, they range from six to eight dollars depending on the color. Um, I'm not sure what makes the eight dollar ones more expensive, especially by that much considering the size is so small. But there are some very very interesting colors, and um, if I place an order from Van S, I may pick up a few of those. Last thing, and probably the most boring, but I still want to talk about it a little bit because it's it's interesting to me and it kind of worries me so Kenro the distributor for Monte Grappa Aurora etc um, they just purchased Esterbrook now if you've been following the fountain pen world you'll know that Esterbrook was just purchased a few years ago by a gentleman named Robert Ro Rosenberg um, so he really got a lot of flack for this. He started a Kickstarter that kind of, eh. Um, they tried to do the pens on Mass Drop. Mass Drop found out that it wasn't so great. He tried to um, neutralize a lot of the negative comments that were posted. He tries to get rid of that stuff. 
So he got a lot of flack from the pin community. Normally, um, the pin community is very nice and open-minded. But when you're reviving a brand like Esterbrook, do a good job. He was charging like $90 for pins that I <laughs> I wouldn't really be interested in reviewing at all, much, even if they were for free. Um, but for $90, it was just completely out of the question. And the biggest thing is, he dropped an Esterbrook J, which, if you've seen them before, are very distinctive small pins. Completely redid them. They look nothing alike. Um, I have an Esterbrook J in green, and it's it, it's the I need to get it repaired. But it's a very nice little pin. The ones he put out looked like crap. Honestly, they were just so generic looking. It, it wasn't even funny. So. In, um, I think, January of this year, maybe a little earlier, they said they were recreating the original Esterbrook to the T. Now, this would mean a few things. One, they would have to manufacture a modern lever filler, which is interesting for sure, but I, I don't know about that. Um, next thing is they would have to have swappable nib units, not just friction fit, but actually unscrew nib units. Um, kind of like Twisby's or Caveco's, things like that. A lot of the old Esterbrooks, you could swap out nibs with any of the other Esterbrooks. They had a massive selection of nibs for that. I think he'd be a little in over his head doing that, so I don't think that's going to happen. But it was just purchased by Kenro. Now, when I first heard this, I was very excited because Esterbrook pens are really, really nice looking. They have a very good reputation. The older ones do. And he had kind of tarnished that name. I was really excited to see what Kenro would do with it. Now that they could make their own pen designs. But. But they hired Robert Rosenberg to join their company. So. That kind of put me off very quickly. Um, I don't know what. Excuse my language a little bit here. I don't know what in the hell they were thinking. Hiring this jackass who ruined the pen name, the entire pen brand for a lot of people, hiring him, that's going to get them so much bad PR, it isn't even funny. Personally, I, I'm going to wait, and I'm going to see what comes out, and, you know, go into it kind of, I'm going to try to go into it open-minded, but they're making it very, very hard by having him there. Um, their website says, that he will be working with the Kenro team to continue to build the Esterbrook brand in both the North American and international markets. I don't know why they would hire him and then put him on the team that's working on the Esterbrook. They, they must not have paid a lot for the name, honestly, because I, I don't think he made very much off of it. He probably lost money off of it because of the just absolute crap job he did with the pens um there you can do some more reading online if you're interested in that but it's a very um long and very rough topic um but I'll, I'll let you take a look at that and judge it for yourself i'm somewhat excited especially if they do bring back the original esther brooks i'll definitely pick one up um if they make them lo a little larger that would be fantastic as it is they're very very small pens um, there may be as long as this Baron Fig Spectre here um, when posted. So that's, mm, it's a little short for me, but I'd be very interested in it just to see what happens. So that's it on the uh, news front for the week. Not a whole lot on the personal front um, as far as the channel goes. I will have some reviews coming up. Tomorrow, I will be posting the review of... Um, the Nutsack Bag Satchel. So that's that's going to be fun. Um, the week after that, I'm probably going to be posting the review of the Baron Fig Squire. So this pin, I'm not really into rollerballs, but I, I needed one. I hate ball points. They're garbage. Rollerballs are a lot better, a lot smoother. And fountain pens don't work on certain paper, like receipt paper and things like that. So I picked this one up, and I really, really like it. Um, I... To me, it's worth the price I paid, but I also paid a little over retail. But um, they're interesting pens. There are some issues with them, for sure, especially considering the price, but I'll be interested to take a look at it. Um, after that, there will be reviews of the Pelican M805 Ocean Swirl, and sometime after that, 
with the permission of my wife, I'll be reviewing the Platinum um, Classic Machia. This is a very interesting little pen. Very pretty, and for the price, or at least the price we got it at, the um, the value is very, very good. And this Platinum 18 karat gold nib, I think I actually like it a little better than the nib on my 3776. I'll have to compare them a bit more and take a look at it, but it's it's a very compelling pen for sure. There will be a lot of ink reviews coming up. Um, one of my viewers posted a comment yesterday um, kind of noting the inconsistency of my ink dry time tests. And I've been thinking for a while about kind of redoing that, so I'm going to be doing that. However, I have filmed several ink reviews in advance, so it might be a little while before you see that change. Just wanted to update you on that. But I do have reviews coming up of Organic Studio Ernest Hemingway, Palito Shizuku Kosu Mosu, and um, KWZ Gummyberry, Colorverse Schrodinger, and Cat. Quick note on that, by the way. Um, I had mentioned in my Atlanta pen show recap that I had got my Colorverse Schrodinger and Cat box, but they gave me Saturn V. Now, I, um, I've been using the bottle labeled Saturn V for a while, and I'm fairly certain that it actually is Cat, it's just mislabeled. So the Schrodinger bottle is obviously labeled Schrodinger, and it, I've tested it, it is Schrodinger, it's green. But the Saturn V, I don't think their Saturn V is a glistening ink, but it this one definitely has some shimmer in it. And comparing it to the um, online pictures of the cat ink, they're very similar. It's um, it's like a blue ink with kind of an aqua um, shimmer to it. It's a very interesting color. I like it a lot, to be honest. I'm not a huge fan of shimmering inks, but this one's very, very nice. Um, so I do think it's just the mislabeled version. So I will be reviewing this as cat. I will not be reviewing it as Saturn V unless one of you... Um, has a sort of uh, a proof or anything like that that it is Saturn V. If they make a Saturn V glistening ink, let me know in the comments, but I don't think they do. All right. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to check out my other videos, and if you like this, subscribe. I'm going to try to put one of these out every week, depending on the influx of fountain pen news. There isn't always a lot of it, so... But um, feel free to check out my other, other videos and keep an eye out for the reviews of the stuff I mentioned coming up. And if you're interested, there will be a link to all the topics in the description. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.